Schnaubig miteinander und recht herzlich willkommen zur heutigen Folge von Jazz in Concert. Sehen Sie den zweiten Teil unserer Konzertaufzeichnung mit der Jazz in Concert Formation mit Ronnie Cuber, Baritonsaxophon, Thomas Möckel, Gitarre und Flügelhorn, Kenny Werner, Piano, Adam Holzmann, Synthesizers, Lincoln Goins, Bass und dem Schlagzeuger Steve Ferron.
I have seen you working now for two days and you look like a very relaxed man. That's why I'm surprised to see that you wrote several articles about the effortless piano playing. I mean, like the mental state and you seem to be into that a lot. Yes. Where does, were you a nervous person before? <coughs> well, the piano, I'll talk about the piano. For many people, it represents a, uh, it's like a mirror. And uh, all their fears and anxieties, when they get to the piano, they, they come up. And I had that, but many, many pianists have that. And uh, I had two teachers in my life who were dedicated to uh, effortless piano playing. One was named Madame Charloff, and she was like a, a prophet. She was like a very spiritual lady. And another one was in Brazil. His name was João Assis Brasil. And since I had two teachers to give me this message, I figured I was supposed to get this message. And I started to practice uh, effortlessness at the piano. And the philosophy is accepting what wants to come through rather than forcing music to, oh. instead of making music, I try to let music happen. That sounds almost a little bit like a piano psychiatry. <laughs> It has really become that. There are people who come to a lesson and we never touch the piano. Ah, that's <laughs> very interesting. <laughs> now, you have been playing with a lot of bands also. For example, I think Mel Lewis band. And did you <coughs> started, did you start as a side man, if I can say that? Or was it always a little bit the solo piano player? Well, I really started as a leader. Uh, the first band I, I put together myself and I wrote all the music and when I was younger I was a soloist and I had to really learn to be a sideman. Very often I would work for somebody and I would get too many ideas about the music and then I would be fired. So today I try to uh, is control that, is, myself. Is there a danger <laughs> that too many ideas, if you say too many ideas on the stage that the band leader uh, yeah, that's a danger. Uh, another, well, you have to decide what you want to do in life. I find myself always wishing that everybody would hire me as a sideman, but really I think my calling is to play my own music. In, in my piano psychiatry, I teach that there are no wrong notes. Every note is a good note. If you love it, as soon as you hear it, it becomes a good note. Take Thelonious Monk. I mean, everybody tries to imitate Thelonious Monk, and it's funny, they have all this piano, but they try to imitate. That's because he loved every note he played. The wrong notes became the right notes. But as a side man, your leader may not agree. <laughs> so that's why I like to play with my trio, because I close my eyes and I say to the universe, every note here is the most beautiful sound I've ever heard. And that's, not, that's whatever that sounds like, that's my music, with no other definition.
thinking goings. When I look at all the records I have at home where you're on, I figured there would be a bass player around 45, 50 coming to the set. And now I see you and it absolutely floored me because you're so young. Now, how did you do that? How did you manage to get all these recordings done? I mean, I don't know. when did you start to play bass? I started to play, uh, I started to play bass when I was 17. I started in the orchestra, you know. Um, I wanted to be a classical player, so I studied in Vancouver where my parents were living. I studied uh, bass and cello. Yes, and, classical. Uh, classical, and then, um, what happened? And then I got a girlfriend, so I sort of had to give one of the instruments up, you know. So I decided to give up, give away the cello, and just focus on the bass. Change a cello for a girlfriend. Yeah. Why do you have to? Why do you have to leave one instrument if you get a girlfriend? Well, it was very demanding. It took a lot of time, you know. Oh. And, well, anyway, that's the what, that's what happened. Yeah. And then, when did the change over to to jazz come, or to that other type of music? Uh. I don't know. I guess I, I sort of got disillusioned with what the career opportunities were for a classical musician. I really didn't. I saw that it was more like being a craftsman. I mean, unless you were, uh, you know, started very young and wanted to be like a soloist, it was just like being craftsman, like, you know, showing up for the job and playing. And now, when you started to play jazz, did you start in groups or did you go immediately into the studio work? I didn't go immediately into studio work. I started playing groups, um, not necessarily making money. My, in fact, my first job was playing in a strip club, you know, playing jazz yeah. in a strip club, you know. And those kind of opportunities, the studio things, really didn't start to happen until I moved to New York, which was a, which was a little bit later than that. I moved to New York when I was uh, 24, you know. Now, I can imagine New York is a very tough place for a musician. How do you, and, and there are a lot of musicians in New York, and your qualities must have uh, been the reason why you got onto, into, into these jobs. I think that's part of it. I also think part of it is I, I went there with a band from California, and uh, I got a chance to be heard without having to push myself on anybody. And uh, I don't know, I don't really know People have asked me this before. I don't know what the formula is. I know I'm a very hard worker, you know? And I know that I, I can fit well into a lot of different genres of music, you know? That's, that's an, another point. You play upright bass, and you can play a straight ahead jazz, and you pick up the electric bass, and it's not just a bass player that also has an electric bass, but there's two worlds between this. Uh, uh, is, was that a big uh, thing for you, a change, to start with the electric bass until you had that part of the direction? Uh, yeah, I really didn't like the electric bass when I first started playing. I, I started playing because people told me that that's what they wanted, you know, and then I got into it, you know. It, it's, somehow it's more versatile in a way. I love the sound of the, of the wood bass. And that's what draw me, drew me into playing bass originally. But the electric bass is a, has a little bit more versatility in that it can fit into a lot of different kinds of music.